He was is, perfect when he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Absolutely, because that okay. shows... Um, perfect weakness, perfect it, confusion. It, no, it shows his humanity. There is nothing wrong with having weakness. It is perfect flawed humanity. God the Father asks something of the Son. The Son doubts the Father. The Son overcomes that doubt, ascends into heaven, and is united with the Father in spirit. That is essentially the logical unity that is going on there. So yes, absolutely, I do believe that there is nothing imperfect about Christ in that moment. If something okay. is perfect, is there any possibility that it is imperfect? I'd say that its existence contains the possibility of its existence, which would would in contain the possibility of its... Yeah, I would probably say that there's no possibility that it could not be itself. That would be the law of identity. Wow. I, I don't know why this is so painful. Um, the unity... Catholics argue that the unity of the divine and humanity is absolute. It's not that it's not that Christ is imperfect. He is perfect, even in his humanity. It would be more typical, pro typically Protestant to say that actually the humanity and the uh, divinity within Christ was only made possible, even though it's a contradiction, was only made possible through the power of God. So uh, was, no, uh, no. He was perfect when he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Absolutely, because that okay. shows the... That shows the um, perfect weakness, perfect it, it, confusion. No, it shows his humanity. There is nothing wrong with having weakness. It is perfect, flawed humanity. His humanity is. There's, is, there's is nothing imperfect up. about having weakness. If if, there's nothing if he's God, then how can he think that God betrayed him? He is God because how how could have you ever thought you've betrayed yourself? Have you ever doubted yourself? Do you think God could be? Am I perfect? True to himself without the capacity to doubt himself. Am I perfect? No, but do you think that he could? If I were himself? perfect, I would not doubt myself because I'm perfect. How could you know you are perfect unless you did doubt yourself? How, uh, well, I'm I'm resisting the phrase to just say how ridiculous. But you just <laughs> said, how could you know you're perfect unless you did something imperfect? No, I'm saying, how would you know you are perfect unless you engaged in the capacity? And there's nothing imperfect. It about does it. a perfect a perfect circle doesn't exist? But if we assume that a perfect circle does exist. Mm -hmm. Could God create a perfect circle? Um, um, um yeah, I, I, I suppose, yeah. Sure. So, I mean, the concept if, of the if circle the, if in the general circle, would be, if I, yes, if the circle exist. is truly perfect, is there any possibility that it is imperfect? Well, well, the, yeah, there is the possibility that could be something other than itself. Otherwise, it wouldn't be able to be itself. That which is. It's like, saying, it's like the, it's like the, the circle, necessitation rule, right? Like there has to be possibility. This is what even happens even when you throw out the law of excluded middle. How is no okay? We can talk about the law of the excluded middle. No, if you no, want, no, this is nothing to do with this. The, 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 the thing to do is, I, I, I'm talking about here's something that's perfect. If it's perfect, is there any possibility that it is in any way imperfect? How would this relate to the law of the excluded middle? I, I'm asking a question. No, but I'm, I'm, I'm asking you how this relates to the law of the excluded it middle. It may not. Why don't you then answer why did you the say question? I, I, okay. I'm sorry that you don't grasp this, but I said something, no, and now I'm fair. going back to try to figure out exactly okay. where this went wrong so I can show that. All I'm saying is, if something okay. is perfect, is there any possibility that it is imperfect? So long as it obtains its identity, then it has been shown to be perfect, then it would be, I wouldn't say it would be, I'd say that its existence contains the possibility of its existence, which would would in, contain the possibility of its, maybe its, yeah, I would probably say that there's no possibility that it could not be itself. That would be the law of identity. Wow. I I don't know why this is so painful. I just figure if something's perfect, then there's no possibility that it's not perfect. I just I just affirmed that. I just I, said I know, that. but it, it took a while before we got to the final no, sentence. That's the law of, yeah, so so now one before we move on. Now, please explain. So are you I, saying that this has I'm nothing not, to do with the law of executive middle? I don't know yet. This is what I'm trying to suss out. You're the one with the position. So why did you make the accusation? Look, okay, it's the law of identity. That's what you're affirming. No, and, it's not merely the yes, law of is. identity. Identity identity, what is what entails the Maybe other the law of non-contradiction. Yes. Okay, so you're saying that it would be a contradiction to be perfect and imperfect simultaneously. Correct. Okay, great. That's not the point. If it's that would be a metaphysical point, true. I, that's absolutely how do you know that's not the point? It's my point to make. I'm asking a question to try to get to clarity. Is okay. it possible? As as I is it possible? Is it possible for something to be both perfect and not perfect? Of course not. 
Would a perfect mind understand that? Yes. Would a perfect mind ever have reason to doubt that it was perfect? How would a perfect mind understand it? So when I get to the question, so you're, you're answering a question, you're answering a question, and but when I question. get to the one that exposes your flaw, it's not you a ask flaw. a different question. It's not a flaw. I'm, I'm saying it, that it is, is a flaw. It is a flaw. It's, if something is perfect, there is no chance that it's not perfect. If so, if there's a perfect mind, then there is no chance that it is imperfect. The, the if, whole, sorry. If there's a perfect mind, then it would understand that there's no chance that it's not perfect, right? Okay, let me. If you want, I'll, I'll even use the Christian allegory for this, right? If we look at the existence of God the Father, all knowing, I'm not talking everything. about Christian. I'm talking about X is well, perfect. Yeah. No, I'm no, talking okay, about well, okay. a perfect mind. I know. I'm I not said, talking about Christianity right now. I'm talking about well, a why perfect not, mind. Why not make this? Look, Can a could, perfect could, mind doubt that it is perfect? In terms, I'm I'm trying to answer the question. It's a but yes or no question. I, why would you why would you engage in such a way? Like that's just ridiculous. Look, I'm trying Why would to I engage in such a way that's just ridiculous? Yeah. I just did it with a circle and you did Look, a tap dance stop. Will you please stop. let me speak? Stop. You no. did a tap dance Look, around. No, I will not no. be. No, all right, then I won't stop you. We'll we to, 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 to figure out who's talking the most I hate to do and this, which one is dancing around. To, what I do have to do is a perspective I want to give Matt a chance to unpack just because we've given you uh I know that it was much earlier in the debate, to be fair, but there were some portions where it was, you know, like four or five minutes. So I do want to give Matt plenty of time to give a quick rebuttal, and then I promise to give you a chance to respond perspective, but bear with me. Go ahead, Matt. If X is perfect, and you've agreed that if X is perfect, it cannot be imperfect. And if we have a perfect mind, then it can't be an imperfect mind. And a perfect mind should understand that it's a perfect mind, unless you want to claim that it doesn't know that it's perfect, and then I don't know how it's perfect. And so at, at how could a perfect mind ever doubt whether or not it was perfect? That's the question. Okay, is it all right if I speak now? Is that, yeah, okay. Fair enough, I understand that. So I'm arguing not that it necessarily, that the doubt obtains, but that the doubt was only a moment within the existence of God. So when we look at knowledge, and we're not just simply saying truth, not something's identity with itself, which necessarily something is perfect, it must be perfect. Absolutely, 100%, agree with you there. If God is perfect, he must know himself to be perfect. What I'm arguing is that the, that the, the, the way in which you know something is to have the capacity to accept that is what? falsifiable. Now, you made that argument. You said that something to be true and knowable must be falsifiable. So unless you are going to say that that is not the case, then you have to affirm that in order for something perfect to know itself, it must have the capacity to doubt itself or be unsure of that certainty and therefore overcome it. Now, that is exactly what happens within the story of the Trinity. God the Father asks something of the Son, the Son doubts the Father, the Son overcomes that doubt, ascends into heaven and is united with the Father in spirit. That is essentially the logical unity that is going on there. So yes, absolutely, I do believe that there is nothing imperfect about Christ in that moment. So for, for those who are, are watching, I removed Christianity from this and specifically talked about a perfect mind. And whether or not it's possible for a perfect mind to doubt that it is perfect, whether or not this leads to some sort of contradiction showing that it's not perfect. And your response is that it was a moment of doubt. It was a moment. And once, once they had overcome that moment, a perfect mind would not need to overcome that. And so what you repeatedly said is, what I'm arguing is, what I'm arguing is, what I'm arguing is. So instead of addressing the abstract notion of a perfect mind as an abstract, you would not view it except in terms of your argument with the Trinity, which I don't recognize the possibility that there is such a thing as a perfect mind. I don't, I'm not the one making the argument that any such thing exists, but you took the abstract single perfect mind and overlaid it into your story, even though I had gone to efforts to remove it from that. And then you basically said, yeah, it's perfect, but perfection includes the ability to doubt for a moment whether you're perfect. I disagree. 
Okay, that's fair enough. I can see that you disagree. Um, I think that the disagreeing with this would necessarily you lead you to reject your earlier statement that what is can be shown to be true necessarily has to be falsifiable. Why? So I'm just well because if the a perfect mind could not doubt that it was itself, then it would have no ability to actually affirm or falsify the truth of its the proposition that it is itself. That no, it, is it would perfect. it would know. How it would. It know? It, the, it would the, it would already know this. There would be no point of doubt. There would be so nothing the, so it, that it would wouldn't it be understand. Would it be unfalsifiable? Would what be unfalsifiable? It's knowledge that it is itself, that it is perfect. Well, the only thing that matters with regard to falsifiability is truth claims. You were talking mm -hmm. about the ontology of a perfect mind. Wait, I, I, wait, so you do think that, so when you say that the ontology of a perfect mind, yeah, that's fine. We, we agree that it's perfect. We've already agreed that it's, I said that in the moment in which, how would it know it? It would be a process, an active process. And we agree that this process, well, I'm arguing that this process led. A perfect to mind its doesn't need a process. A perfect mind knows and understands e everything without exception. Well, yeah, but that would be the unit. Like, look, look, like, look at it like this, that, that there's nothing wrong with, like, it does need a process actually, but that, that would be its actual constant affirmation of itself. It would have to say, I, I am. Why next. would a perfect mind need constant affirmation? Because it would have to constantly obtain itself. No, so it, like, it wouldn't, for, it wouldn't something need to be true, anything. It, it would have to, well, it would need itself. That's the point. It would need to be It itself. has itself. It doesn't need itself. It just is itself. I mean, if you're, if you're going to be desperately flailing around to find something it needs and just say it needs itself, it already has itself. The, the, you might, it, 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 that's I don't just think a you realize that for something to be itself, there was, and this is the whole point of my argument, that there is certain logical conditions to be itself. For example, it's particularity, which means, and as I said before, the particularity is a logical analysis or a logical, um, the logical affirmation of something in relation to others, which means that it has to affirm that there is a possibility of others. So like, for example, if we take a circle and to say that this is a circle and not a square, we would say that, like, well, it's a circle and not a square. Its identity is It a doesn't matter if it's a square. B. It does. It doesn't. It's a circle. It it, it's like, it, it. look at it like this, right? If I was to say that something is perfect, okay, then I have to be able to say that it is not imperfect. That's, that's about you being able to tell whether or not it's perfect. You're not a perfect mind either. But even if I was a perfect mind, I would have to affirm that it is not how do you know that? You're not a perfect mind. How do you know what a perfect mind wouldn't have to Because do? it's logically necessary. It's not logically necessary. If it's it is, perfect, it does it is from, a perfect we, mind wouldn't need anything. So do you think that a perfect mind could engage in a form of knowing which excludes, let's say, syllogistic, like a kind of syllogistic reasoning? I don't of, think a perfect mind can exist. Okay. But I mean, that that's not the point. You're, I mean, this is a hypothetical and you're holding me to sure. the point. Of a, if you're willing to say, how would I know what a perfect mind, is? you know, and you, if I was, if, and, and if I was to say, well, yeah. I know it exists and that's how I, it's like, it's a hypothetical. You, you know, you are engaging with it in such a way. Yeah. If there say, was a perfect mind, what's the question? So if there was a perfect mind, would it, would it have to engage in the form of logical analysis to understand itself, to gain knowledge no. of itself? No. So how would it know? How would it know? It, it just is. It just does. It is. It is perfect. Well, it, 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 you say that it's perfect, but what's its perfection if it doesn't have? If, its if perfection it, it, is so. A mind is a, for lack, I, this can be hard to describe, but essentially, a mind is the thinking thing. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So let's say there's the thinking. A perfect thing. thinking thing is incapable of error. Mm -hmm. It doesn't require any thought to say, hmm, am I actually incapable of error? Because that would suggest that it could be capable of error, but it knows that it's not capable of error. There's no process. It is merely perfection. Perfection is perfection. It doesn't need the, the to demonstrate or affirm it. It is perfection. But you, it's, it's, the demonstration is to itself. It's, it's that it, it, it is a unity between itself. It's the thinking and the thoughts that it has. It, it doesn't require a demonstration because it can't be wrong. But how, the, the whole point is that it can't be wrong and it knows it can't be wrong. Yes. And the reason it knows it can't be wrong is because it understands its thoughts perfectly. Yes. 
And the reason it understands its thoughts perfectly is because it is a logical relation with itself, which is perfect. Yes. Unless you're implying that there is a form of thinking which all does of those not things conform are to logic. All of those things are correct, and none of them require a moment of doubt. So you're so just so I understand this, you're trying to say that what I'm arguing as a logos has the possibility of denying logical analysis or logic in order to gain knowledge. It has it has knowledge without itself. It no, has it knowledge precedes, without this logical. It precedes logic. It doesn't precede logic. No Christian believes that it precedes logic. I don't care what most could no Christian believes. What no Christian believes is irrelevant. I'm talking about, we're not even talking about Christianity, despite the fact that that's supposed to be the topic. I'm talking about a perfect mind. You seem to be incapable of focusing on this abstract perfect mind without injecting Christianity and without injecting what other Christians say or anything else. I, at no point in this did I mention whether or not most Christians say it. or Why would I care what most fallible, flawed minds think about a perfect God? So... You're, the argument you're trying to engage in is a kind of uh, the same as the argument of allegory that like so Thomas Aquinas or someone would engage in, that we cannot know the mind of God perfectly. And so for us to attribute something to it would mean that we would diminish its perfection. Sure. Yeah. The reason why that does, uh, that was actually what made me an agnostic, like, you know, a few years ago, because, it, you know, how could I know God if I have, if I as a human am incapable of knowing? Then I, I understand that that is... Um, I understand that that's a, a big moment of doubt for people. Um, so there's a there's a few things in that. One, it's not that you you know that you can't know God. Is that you might be able to know God in His perfection, but you can know aspects of God that must necessarily be the case. I, it's I not like that. yeah. So like it, I, you to can't say know that perfection. God is yeah. So I I don't know God, and this is this is Thomas Aquinas again. Like. It, you know, he actually argues that the ontological argument doesn't make sense because uh, in, in, in his argument, in his belief, he thinks that the absolute knowledge of a mind, the most perfect being that would necessarily have to exist, well, that is incomprehensible to a human. So I don't, but yet he still believes in God and actually argues he can rationally believe in God. So do you see the, the reason that he does this is because it's not that you need to know what God knows about himself. You simply need to know how God would know himself. And that's because how things can be known necessarily, because you cannot but, posit something. You know, no, the, the whole point of what I'm arguing, how something can know itself from a limited perspective. The, no, it, yeah. I'm arguing from, okay. I'm arguing from God my limited, limited human and my limited human perspective can come to the conclusion that the only way something can know that there can be knowledge requires that, that it can be, falsified or has the possibility of being false otherwise it's simply an assertion uh, so you, like you, unless like this is this is why i said unless you're affirming that knowledge itself is can be unfalsifiable and uh, which I, i've seen you in other arguments as well rely upon this that I'm, you are, that you unless you're affirming that knowledge itself can be unfalsifiable you have no reason to say that just because jesus doubted god on the cross with that it means that uh, that the father on the cross means that he is uh, not God. Like it's such a strange way to, to say that. It's like as if he, as if the very act of engaging in the thinking that would make him most credibly God, the fact that he has proven himself to himself, you see that as a weakness. Yeah. I see that as only strength. Well, that's because you've, you know, well, here's the thing. Um, you're looking at this from the standpoint of a flawed being and trying to put how we attain knowledge and our understanding of knowledge and trying to say that God must also, or a perfect being must also attain knowledge in the same way. Um, I think that is a critical failure, just as if you were saying that God exists outside of space and time and you tried to make God contingent or dependent on space and time or causality. Um, I'm saying that our understanding of how we attain knowledge and how we go about thinking we try to extend that to perfection and we can't get there. And I see to say that a perfect God yeah. has the same limitations that we do is bizarre. And when Jesus, now if you were to say, yes, Jesus was fully man and fully human, not only does that not make sense, but the Trinity doesn't make sense, but his human part wasn't perfect. That it's the part that had doubts and not the God part that had doubts. But as soon as you say God had doubts, then that's not perfection. 
I, I would definitely disagree for reasons that I've already stated, and I don't want to, you know, just you know, uh, you know, keep going with it. Um, 